Okay, um, it's a little bit past time here. Um, I haven't had anybody uh, show up today, which is a little bit unusual for this uh, class so far. I've been having, um, I mean, not a whole lot, but a few students showing up each time. So I guess maybe everybody's kind of getting tired here. We're ready for the, uh, the end of this uh, summer, five weeks here. Uh, but we do have one more assignment here. Um, so as usual, I'll go over it here, uh, give some um, thoughts on it. Um, and yeah, we'll see if anybody shows up. I'll probably keep my keep this uh, Zoom session open. It's kind of office hours, although I might end up going quicker through this without anybody uh, here watching or asking questions. So, um, all right. So we're talking about assignment ten here. Um, I've already done the preliminary stuff, so I've already clone the repository. Um, I've already accepted the assignment and then clone the repository. Um, so our final data structure that we're looking at are uh, hash tables and dictionaries, okay? So as I discussed in our lecture videos uh, for this unit, um, I mean, dictionaries are really uh, an ab abstraction of the idea of a key value pair, okay? So, so this is just a generic um, way that we think about of organizing our data. And most of our data that we, uh, the way that we organize it and access it is in this way as like key value pairs, okay? Because normally we have something like a key, um, you can think of it also as an index if you're more familiar with databases. Um, so this, this is usually, this is a value that has to be unique usually, although we don't enforce that the keys have to be unique in the collections we've done so far. But like in a database context, your, your index, the, that the value that you key on to get the record or the data, the, the value um, usually has to be unique, okay? But doesn't doesn't always have to be for the generic idea of a key value pair, right? So, um, and then, you know, the, the key or the index basically is associated with our container with uh, a, a particular value, right? And the value can be more complex than just a, uh, a simple scalar type. So it doesn't have to be just a string or a float, you know, the, the value. So, so more common is, you know, we have a key which, which, which is often unique, like an index or like a, an, an ID, so like a social, social security number or a campus-wide ID might be used as the key. And then the value is normally a record or a structure or a class, right? So it's usually like a collection of data that that key um, that we use uh, that's associated with that key, and then that key is used to, to look up and, and, and get the data back out so we can work with it and maybe write it back in, you know, uh, with that key, right? So, so, so really key value pairs um, and dictionaries are, are generic types. Um, um, they're, they're really an abstraction, and, and you could implement a dictionary using different data structures. In fact, you know, you, you could implement a dictionary just as a regular list, and in that case, uh, you know, inserting a key is pretty easy uh, if you don't have to worry about the keys being unique. So, so if you allow duplicate keys, uh, if you just use a regular list, you could insert any new key request to the end of the list, right? But then um, a, a search for a key becomes an O-N if you're using a list as your data structure at the back because you would have to search through the whole list unless you use a list that you keep sorted and then implement a binary search on that list, all right? So another common way to implement a dictionary though is as a binary tree. So, so using the data structure that we used in our um, previous assignment or, or one of our previous assignments here, right? So for a tree, um, uh, it does take a, a login time to insert new values in there. But when you're doing that, you can easily check whether the value is unique or not. So if you do have um, a requirement that, you, that each key or each index is unique, you could use a tree uh, and then insert it in there. Um, so in the process of finding the node where you're gonna insert the value, you would be able to also check, okay, do I already have that key, right? And throw an exception or something. So in that case, um, insertion becomes login, but you can do, you can, you can enforce um, uniqueness on the keys while you're inserting and 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 reading the value back out. So, so, um, um, so, so you're fined on, on um, 
a dictionary if you use a binary tree. You could just directly use the find that we implemented for our binary tree. And that would also be a, a login operation to find the value associated with the key, all right? So most high-level languages buy some sort of a dictionary data type, right? So if you never use these before, you should really learn. So, so these are called uh, different things in different languages. So C++, the standard template library that, that we may talk about in this class, um, has a type called a map, which is a dictionary, basically, right? And there's actually two types of maps in the standard template library. There's a um, unordered maps and an ordered map. And the, the ordered map uses a, um, a binary tree because you can, you can iterate over the dictionary and get the value back out um, in sorted order if, if you use a binary tree. And, and all the operations are relatively efficient. They're all login operations to um, insert and find items, right? But we're going to be looking at another common data structure um, so we're actually going to be implementing a hash dictionary or, or a hash, uh, a hashing scheme to be the data type for our dictionary here, right? So the thing about a hash um, is it's, in theory, it's, 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 on paper, it looks better than even a, um, a binary tree for a key value pair mapping because insertion is constant time for a hash, and lookup or find is constant time for a hash, although you, you can't get the, the items back out in a sorted order. So you do lose that ability to be able to sort of iterate over the items in like sorted order from a hash, but you get this, this really neat property that, that you, can, you can insert and find items um, and remove items in constant time. Um, you know, so so long time um, uh, for a binary tree really isn't that expensive, but but still, constant time is is, a, is an improvement, a bit of an improvement, right? Although there's a caveat on this, um, as if if and when you go over the materials for the hash dictionary, you'll see that that we're actually using uh, an array as the backing store for the dictionary. So it is possible that the array could be full. You know, we, we've all of our data structures that we've looked at so far, where we used a, a, a regular C array as our backing store, always had that problem. So we had to manage the memory, and you had to keep track of if 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 your array had become full, and at which point you had to grow the array and copy the things over. Right? We still have that that same problem here. So so in theory, insert, remove, and find are all constant time. They can be done in in, in big O of one operation. But um, uh, insert um, can, in the worst case, be O N and can be quite expensive because if you're trying to insert into a, a hash table um, that's already full, um, you have to allocate a new array and rehash all the values from the old storage into the new storage. Right? And in fact, you usually don't wait until the, the hash table is completely full. Um, as I'm sure I talked about in um, our lecture videos um, for this unit, because performance can degrade. So, so we're gonna be using a type of hashing technique um, called, um, I'm gonna draw a blank, um, uh, a, a type of hashing technique where we, um, uh, so, so open versus closed hashing here. Um, so, for closed hashing, what happens if you have collisions when you do your hash, you, cre you create a linked list, all right? For open hashing, if you have collisions, then you kind of, you, you check the next index in the array, or we're gonna be using a variation in this um, assignment where we have a, another function that calculates the next index to check whenever you have collisions in, in order to resolve collisions, okay? But again, if, if those chains become long, whether you use an open or closed hashing, um, you know, so, so for open hashing, you still have the same problem. So, so your first um, hash key might collide, but then when you look at the next hash key in, in, in your sequence, um, it might also be the one that you're not looking for. So it might be collision or it might be full if I'm trying to insert a new value, right? 
So in the worst case, I might have lots and lots of collisions. And so, so again, both for insert and find and remove, um, the hash table can degrade um, all the way to, to, to O of N, right? But that, that's a real extreme worst case. And normally, if, you're, if your hash table isn't too full, so, so if you keep your array so that there are lots of empty positions, normally you won't have a collision or, or you might have a collision, but the chain will be real short. Maybe just have to go to the next value in, in the chain or the link to find an empty slot or to find the value you're looking for, all right? So um, all that was as an aside uh, to say that a, a normal thing you do with a hash table, um, you don't wait until the table is completely full because the fuller it is, the, the more likely it is that you're going to have long chains of collisions that you have to follow for resolutions and that degrades performance. So normally what you do is, is you, you grow the table when it's about, when it's like half full. That's, that's a typical um, thing that's you. So once you get up to 50%, uh, once you insert a new value and the table has become 50% full, um, you would um, um, reallocate an array that's double the size and rehash the value, right? So that way um, you'll have to be doing the, 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 the reallocation slightly more um, frequently, but you will greatly reduce the probability um, that, that your chains, that your collision chains will end up being long, which reduces the performance of the hashing table. Um, all right. So like I said, I probably, uh, this video might be pretty short. Um, um, so let, let me just kind of talk one by one. I still haven't had anybody um, show up to ask questions here. Um, so for task one, um, I, I mean, maybe as usual, uh, just in case some people do watch this video after the fact, um, you know, at this point, you ought to be pretty good at being able to figure out how to get started on these, you know, to be able to look at the signature, like, for example, of the functions given in the tests. So if we uncomment uh, task one, task one is to um, um, write this probe function for our, our um, open hashing scheme here. Um, so we're using a quadratic probe. So, and so um, one variation of hope, open hashing is if you have a collision, just keep increasing the index by one until you find like an open slot if you're trying to do an insert. Or if you're doing a find, you know, you, you, you calculate your hash key, uh, which will give you an index into your array, uh, and then you check. So is that what I'm looking for? If that's not the key that I'm looking for in that index, and then again, you just increment, keep incrementing by one, okay? So that's the simplest type of open hashing. So you can slightly improve the performance by, um, uh, so, so you're more likely to get lo longer chains quicker if you just probe by looking, by incrementing by one, by looking at the, the next value each time, right? So if you use a slightly more complex um, function to calculate probe, what are called probe sequences, you can reduce the, the, um, the, the, the length of the collision chains that occur. Or maybe not, in theory, you might not be able to reduce them or eliminate them, but you can make, make it take longer before you end up having you know, long chains of, of collisions that are reducing performance. So that, that's the whole purpose of a probe sequence, like, like a quadratic, quadratic probe, all right? So the quadratic probe is basically, um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we discussed it in here. Um, given the, the, the probe sequence number, okay? So basically for quadratic probe, uh, for, for the probe uh, member function, you have to pass in the um, ID or, or the key um, that you're probing on. Although actually we don't use the key here. Um, And then you just also then you pass in the the, the sequence number of the probe. So for the initial um, hash key, um, um, you're you're still going to be adding in um, some offset 
to the initial hash key index where it hashes to. Okay, so basically for probe index zero, we add two if you use, um, so for client, it, it's a quadratic probe because we use um, um, like a AX squared plus BX plus C, where you're supposed to be implementing it with um, 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 A or C1 is one, uh, B or C2 is two, and, and, and C or, or C3 is uh, two as well, right? So that means, um, so for example, when the probe sequence is zero, um, AX squared will be zero, so that will go away. Uh, and then BX will also be zero, so you'll just have two, so that's the result. Uh, but when, um, when, when your probe sequence is one, and that, that two that's returned needs to be added to the basic hash index to get the actual index that you first look at to you know, either try to insert your value or find your value. Right. So when the hash index is one, or sorry, when the probe index is one, um, it's going to be uh, ax squared. So it's going to be one times x squared, where x x is one here now for when the, the probe sequence ID is one. So that's one plus um, um, bx or, or two times x. So one plus two plus two. So you get five um, for the the probe. Um, sequence number of one, right? And so this is just testing that you're returning this. And that's all the probe function um, does. And, and that's all it returns here, right? So, um, so most all your work is gonna be, be done in the um, hash dictionary.cpp. I think all your work is done in the hash dictionary.cpp and HPP files this week. Well, I mean, there are other classes. So there's a key value. So we've abstracted out. So last week, uh, or, well, um, uh, in, in a previous assignment, we used um, 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 our binary tree node had built in the idea of a key value pair. So we've actually abstracted that out to a separate class now. So there's a separate key value pair class that holds basically just um, uh, a key and a value. It actually also has some extra things in there in order to make it useful for um, for implementing a hashing, a hash table or a hash dictionary with. Um, so it can keep track of whether um, um, a particular key value pair slot is empty or missing as well, which we'll make use of for our hash table. Um, and uh, yeah, there is actually also you know an abstract base class like you are probably used to at this point that that the hash dictionary inherits from. So the hash. So when we implement our hash dictionary, we're going to implement an array-based version of a dictionary, right? But you know, as another exercise, you know, we, you could directly implement this dictionary API using a list like I talked about or a binary tree. Um, so instead of a hash dictionary, you could have a free dictionary, maybe, or a list dictionary, right? Um, so in that case, you would just you you could just reuse one of the uh, data types that we had in the previous that, that you implemented in, in a previous assignment, um, and just map the, the correct functions from those into our API for the dictionary. So insert, find, and remove. Um, so basically, this is actually the same uh, pretty much as our binary tree API. So we really don't need a separate binary tree API. We could have called that API from that assignment just our dictionary API, um, and then you know, and then we could have added in a hash hash table um, as one implementation of our dictionary API. A binary tree is another, and then others if we wanted to, like a list or something. Um, all right, so, but, but basically before we implement find, remove and insert, um, uh, we're gonna have to implement a two hashing function. So that's what the first two tasks are. Um, so, so we implement this probe function. Um, uh, that's the first, we implement the probe and the hash um, methods. Okay. Um, So yeah, task one, there's actually two things. Um, um, so we've got, uh, but yeah, the, the, the first 
test case just test the probe, um, and then there's a second test case uh, testing, um, getting hashing working correctly, the hash mapping or hash dictionary. Um, so for probe, um, um, our signature looks like this. So um, notice um, it, it returns an integer. And it takes a uh, basically it takes a key, um, um, so the ID is going to have to be of type key. So, so we are templatized here. So hash dictionaries have two um, generic template classes that come in. So the key and the value. Again, just like our binary tree from last assignment, from previous assignment here. Um, so so that means that. Um, We have a couple of hash table support functions before we actually implement the dictionary um, uh, API. So we're working on probe. Probe returns an integer. This is an integer. It's not uh, like a template type T because given um, given an integer probe ID, we're just returning the um, or maybe a better name for this might be the, the, the probe sequence number. Given the probe sequence number, we, we return the, um, the actual quadratic probe location that needs to be added to the hash. Right? Um, and maybe I'll go ahead and kind of give you this one too. So oops, I keep doing that. Um, so if we look at our other function that can be for task one, which is the hash function, um, it's similar. It takes a, um, it returns an, an index into the, to a hash table. So it returns an integer value um, and it just takes a key though as, as input, right? As usual, um, we really should be return, be passing uh, complex types in as constant references. I didn't, I didn't discuss that in the assignment description. Um, for that's again, that's, that's an efficiency, you know, um, a thing for C++ here. You know, uh, in case the template type, key type is, is a expensive class to make copies of. This way we don't make a copy, but we guarantee that if we're not changing it, that we won't actually modify it when we pass it to the All right. And I hope the probe isn't too tough. So, so again, I mean, all you have to do for the probe, you, you ignore the key here. So we're, um, some probe sequences don't, um, uh, some probe sequences will, will will depend on the key to modify the probe sequence. We're we're not using one of those types of probe sequences, but um, the textbook that we're basing this assignment on um, had this as part of the API. So you can imagine that maybe hash dictionary is um, is itself a, a base class where we make different uh, implementations of hashing methods. So we could have like a closed hashing table and an open hashing table. Um, and for our open hashing table, we could have some that use quadratic probe like we're doing here, or we could have some that use different probe methods that might use the key as part of the, um, the probe sequence. Right. So anyway, that's why, but, but, but you end up ignoring that. So, so for this, all you have to do is take this value, think of this as x, um, and then you, know, you have to calculate ax squared plus bx plus c and return that as the result, right? So, But I think probe is pretty simple. Now hash, when we talk about the hash function, so, so the hash function is important that you get that correct. Um, and we describe an algorithm for it here to implement hash, okay? Um, so first of all, you should square the key that's passed in. Um, however, although uh, it's 
previously at, at the beginning of this class, you know, I talked a little bit about, you know, normally you should always reuse like library functions. So, you know, e even if you're just squaring a value, you really shouldn't just multiply it by itself to get it square, right? So if you're, if the programming language you're using has um, a library of math functions, um, or if it has a built-in operator for raising things to a power, you want to use those operators instead of, of implementing like squaring by hand by of multiplying the value by itself. But in this case, um, um, using the CMath version of POW will return back a double, which will cause us problems here. So we really want a, a, a square of an integer. Um, and uh, I believe that there isn't like a CMath where you can force it to do integer um, powers, right? So, so, so uh, calculate the square of a value, but use integers and return an integer result. Okay. So, um, so, so yeah, you should just um, uh, just multiply the key by itself to square it. Okay. So. Um, Oh, yeah, but um, um, as I just kind of showed here, uh, we should be passing this in as a constant reference. So that makes it problematic. If you try and multiply your parameter key times key um, and reassign it, or especially, so I think it's fine if you multiply key but times key, but if you try and reassign that result back into the key itself, this is a constant. So, so you'll have to create another like local variable. So like the square key equals key times key or something like that. Um, okay, so normally we're going to be working with 32 bit ints. Uh, so our dev box should be using 32 bit ints. Um, you can find that out, for example. Um, that would be a quick way for me to do that. Uh, yeah, maybe I won't, won't program that per se, but um, um, let's say let's say we were starting on our hash function here. So I already gave you the um, um, I already gave you the signature for the, the function there. So I want to add my probe and my hash after the string function here. There it is. Bad habits here. I mean, you should fill these in, but um, I just want to go ahead and get past this. Um, we just have a parameter. Return the hash key. Um, in this case, we're adding in our hash member function here, um, which is a member of this template. Class hash dictionary. So getting in all, all this fluffy stuff here to tell it. Um, it's a member of the hash dictionary, simplified by key and value. So, I mean, if you wanted to check, you can always use the, the size of built-in functions. This is the old C function. It's actually an old C built-in. I don't even know if it's an actual function library function. It might be like a built-in part of the language. What do we call it like a function, right? So this will return actually the number of bytes. So we're expecting for a 32-bit uh, to be four bytes. So it should tell us that the size of int is, um, um, is that there. I mean, actually, I probably should just add it into my test instead of having it. So every time I call hash, it would be 
run in that code. Uh, if I leave it like that, you know, uh, maybe I'll just um, print the uncommon test that I have here instead. So. Here so that we can see it right away. Oops. Uh, oh, no return statement for our. And it's supposed to be returning something. Um, oh, yeah. And um, either have to add in add in my, uh, at least a stub function of the probe or um, so I can compile it here. Let's move that off, I guess. Um, no, so, um, uh, if I do that, then I will have to uh, comment those tests back out. So, um, all right, so we'll just go and put a stub for the probe as well here. Our probe looks similar. Um, it takes a key, but it also takes a second parameter. So, you know, like a clean build here. Whenever I get link errors, I usually uh, often like to do a, a clean of everything just in case. There we go. That's better. So that was just all an aside, though, to, to just confirm that here. So, so yeah, your dev, our dev boxes should be 32 bit ints. Okay. And so, so the, the description of the hash key here um, is kind of for a 32 bit int, but, um, you know, a fuller implementation, we might want to actually. Um, figure out what the bit size is of our integers. So, so we're using integers as indexes into our array, um, uh, which you know our hash table is going to be an array of values, basically. Actually, our hash table is going to be an array of, um, of, of the key value pair types, right? So, so um, you know, maybe I, I should have um, talked a little bit about that. So if you look at the hash dictionary, um, and, and you look at the actual hash table. So the hash table is meant to hold the array of key value pairs here, right? So notice it's actually, its type is a key value pair. Uh, the pointer means that we're gonna actually allocate an array or a block of these key value pairs um, into our hash table, right? But, but you know, so it, it is an array, right? So we index it with an integer index, zero, one, two, three. Um, okay, so so anyway, after you square the value, then um, you want to keep only the middle uh, 16 bits. So we're using a hash um, function um, described in our textbook called mid square hashing, I believe. All right, so that, that's that's the algorithm that we're implementing here. Um, so anyway, yeah, so, so it's a type of, of, of mid-square hashing. So what that means is that, that yeah, we square that. It's kind of a literal description of what it does. So, so we square the original um, uh, key, right? So we're assuming that the key is, is um, some sort of a value that could be manipulated like an integer, right? Um, and we mostly just use integer indexes. So that's not always the case. So, so like a key that was like more like string-like, you might have to do a different kind of a hashing function um, and that's kind of beyond the scope of this um, assignment, but, but yeah, you, you know, in order to support this with templates like we're doing, you have to do some complex things to 
try and figure out, okay, the, the actual type of the key, um, is it string-like? So should I use a string-like hashing function or is it integer or numeric-like? So can I use a numeric-like um, kind of hashing function? So um, for this one, um, so we want just the middle 16 bits. Um, if we have a 32 bit um, value like we do here for, for the keys that you need to use for the site. So you can just assume that's a 32 bit value, a 32 bit int actually. Um, so the, the easiest way for me, the easiest way to do this is just to use um, bitwise operators. So if you've never used these before, um, there's ways to actually work on values like integers as if it's just um, a, a collection of bits, right? So for example, um, I, I mean, I pretty much give you kind of, well, hopefully all you need to know. So, so if you mask your key by, um, by a mask like this, so this is a hexadecimal. So basically, and remember, if you remember your hexadecimal notation, uh, each digit represents four bits. So there, there's one, two, three, four, there's six digits here. So the first 24 bits and the 32 bits get masked with a one. So F is, is four ones in hexadecimal, four, four binary ones, right? Um, so basically the, the lower 24 bits, um, um, when you do an and of them remain the same, but the upper um, eight bits, all get masked out, all get set to zero. Okay, so this removes the upper eight bits, right? And the reason why we just, I mean, you could also, if, if you wanted to, you know, you, you, you'd get the same result. You could use a mask of zero, zero, FF, FF, zero, zero. So that, that would do the mid part. And in fact, um, now that I think about that, that might make more sense because that would actually mask out so that you only have the middle 16 bits. And so you mask out the upper eight bits and the lower eight bits, right? But, you know, you don't want to leave it like that because you want the, the 16 bits that you have to be the, the, the least significant bits, okay? So, so, so however you mask this, then you need to shift that down by eight bits. Um, and uh, you can use like a shift operator like this, right? So again, this is using the overloaded, um, um, input operator, but the here, um, since the left is, um, instead of being like an input stream, if the left is an integer, it'll interpret this to mean shifting, bit bitwise shifting, right? So this will shift it down a bit. So the result will be that these 16 bits will end up um, in bits, you know, zero through 16, the, the least significant. And you'll end up with all zeros for the, the the high order 16 bit, right? which is what you want. So finally, after you do that, so our hash tables, um, the hash table in, in the class that you've been given, um, it's gonna be allocated depending on the constructor to some particular initial allocation size, right? And if you don't allocate it, if you don't initialize it with an existing pair of keys and values, it, it initially allocates it as an empty table of you know, this initial allocation size, which did that come from? It must come from, oh, I don't remember. Maybe from dictionary. I don't, I don't know why that's not in the hash dictionary. Um, because that's something that's more of like a, a hash dictionary sort of constant, this initial allocation size. Bit of a mystery. I guess it has to come from either dictionary or key value pair.
Oh, there it is. Um, it's a, it's a class. Uh, it's in the class itself. Um, um, so yeah, it is, it is, sorry about that. So uh, I hate it when I don't understand something, but um, there, there's the, the declaration for it. Um, so yeah, if, if you ask for an empty one, you actually get one of size five, right? But, but that means that any hash key has to be whatever the current size is. And, and um, you know, we, we keep track of the current size of the dictionary, like usual, um, our base class actually defines the size and the um, um, get size and the is empty methods, right? Uh, but whatever the current size is of our, um, oh, I'm sorry, the, um, the uh, I mean, the size is the number of, of values that are in the dictionary. Okay, so, so the, the allocation size is what I meant to say. That, that will be the actual size of the array, all right? So um, when you're implementing your hash key, as a final thing, after you square it and um, get the mid 16 bits um, and correctly ship those mid 16 bits, you have to um, make certain that the resulting hash value, hash key, uh, is within the correct range, okay? So it has to be from zero up to allocation size minus one because those are the valid indexes for the current um, um, hash table array that we've got, um, that we're managing, right? So, um, so that just means that you need to do a modulus. So you need a modulus by the allocation size as your final thing before you return your, um, return the results of, of, of your of, of calculating the hash key for the input key, right? Okay, so I think that's that's a pretty good start on the probe and the hash methods. Um, so after that, for task two, there's another two set of methods. So again, these are both gonna be being used for, um, um, these are actually going to be reused for all of the, the um, public uh, API methods, the find, the insert, um, and the remove here for our hash hashing scheme. So there, there's two different versions of these that will be used in slightly different ways. So there's probe for avail available slot and probe for key slot. Okay? So the and, and the, the 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 signature of of these. Let's go ahead and uh, two calls for these functions. Off two, there is um, again more than one. Case two, I guess. Two separate in this case. So probably the first one is for the probe for available. Um, and then the second test case is the one that probes for the, the um, key slot. Right. So probe for available. Um, Could simply take a key as input, so if you pass that as a constant reference, um, and it returns an index into the the array. Okay, so so it returns an integer, but again, this integer uh, needs to be modded by the current um, allocation size of the hash table, right? So, so the the probe slot is always going to be a value between zero and uh, whatever the the current size of the table is, right? So if the Table size is um, seven. Then, um, whenever you call probe for available slot, you get you're going to get a value between zero and six because those are the valid indexes for an array of size seven here. Right? So yeah, this 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 function actually looks the same as the hash function in terms of the signature. Um, likewise, for the probe for key slot, is going to be the same as well. So it's going to have the same sort of signature. Although, again, you know, this might be an example where um, maybe we a type def would have been useful here um, because we're not really returning like a full integer. We're, we're returning an index into our hash table, right? So that that um, um, 
you know, another check for this that might have been a test. Uh, we're always checking whether that we're getting exactly the probe slot that we're expecting or the, um, yeah, for both of these functions here, right? Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, that value always has to be between zero and the current allocation size of our hash table. So um, an invariant um, a post requisite for calling these functions here. Um, So probing for the available slot is basically you need to implement the, um, the hash. You have to use both the hash and the probe function. And you have to implement the algorithm to, um, to check for collisions, OK? So it's a collision. Um, so when you're looking for an available slot to like insert something, it's a collision if there's already a value um, in the index that you calculate, OK? So the way to do that is you first want to use the, the hash provides what I think of as the home index or the home slot. Uh, but then to, to the home slot, you always have to add in the, the, the result from the probe sequence, starting at the probe sequence uh, of zero or the probe index of zero. Okay? So remember, I mean, even for a probe index of zero, so whatever the home slot is, the a probe index of zero returns two. So you have to add two in. Um, to that, right? So you're always then, then you know, if then then you have a loop. Um, so, you, so you calculate the probe slot by adding in, you know, the, this home slot um, with the the, the probe um, offset calculated from probe for the current index zero here initially. And then you test if test if it's empty or not. Um, so you can test. Remember, this is a table of um, of um, key value pairs. So you know, if you look at our hash dictionary, the hash table is a table of key value pairs. So the way to test if, if a key value pair is empty is, um, so as I already mentioned, we've got a couple of things in here for our key value pair type to support hashing, right? So in particular, there is an is empty method, which will tell you if this key value pair is currently empty or not, an empty slot or not. So you can use that to, to test if it's empty. Um, uh, or if it's empty or missing, okay? So, so this will come up later when we when you implement remove. So uh, a, a, a slot is available to have a new value inserted into it if it's either empty or missing, okay? So in either case, you have to use both of those actually. Um, so if it is empty or if it is missing. So, so in either case, um, In, in either case, you want to return that calculated probe sequence, which again is the addition of the, the home slot from the hash function with the um, the, the probe um, additional um, amount to add in to the home slot. Okay? Otherwise, uh, you keep searching. So otherwise, you increase your probe index by one. So, so check probe index one. Uh, and check that again. So remember for probe index one, um, using the quadratic um, probe sequence, it's going to return like a five as an offset. So you have to add five to the home and check if that slot is missing or empty, right? And if it is, then you return that one. If not, you go to probe sequence three. So that's, that's your check probe for available slot, right? Once you have that working, yes, you probably only uncomment those tests one by one um, in the uh, um, then, you know, if you get that one working, you can work on the probe for slot. It, it's similar, uh, almost identical to this previous method. Um, has the same function signature, uh, has the same general algorithm. Um, the difference is that this method is going to be used for um, um, uh, for searching. So, so this will be the primary method for the find. Uh, API. So basically what you want to do is keep probing um, until you either find the key or you find uh, an empty slot, okay? 
but again, uh, for this one, you want to, you don't want to stop. The, the, the big difference is you don't want to stop if you get to a missing slot, because missing slots are going to be used by our remove uh, to indicate something that's been removed, but it could still be in a, a probe sequence. So, so you have to go past missing. But once you hit an empty, then, then you know that you've hit the end of your um, probe sequence, right? So for the particular find, um, if, if we hit empty, that means you the, the find failed, right? Uh, but, but for this one, um, um, you're, you're going to be uh, uh, probing for um, this particular key slot. If you find it, so, so if, if, the, if the slot in the probe sequence, uh, if the key is equal to the key that you were asked to probe for, um, you return that um, index that you just found. Um, Or if it ever comes to an empty slot during the sequence, it should return the empty slot. Okay, so so in both cases, it's going to return the, the slot where it stopped the search, um, and it's up to the caller to test that to, that 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 slot that it that it returns from probing for this key slot. Either will have the key, or it will be an empty slot. Right. So, so if it has the key, it, if we're using this for find, and it has the key, then our our find succeeded. So, so we found what we were asked to in our hash table, or um, if we return back and, and that slot has an em is empty, um, or sorry, is is um, yeah, if that slot is empty, then the the search find failed, and then we have to try to throw an exception or something. Okay. All right. So those are um, um, uh, just the methods in order to support implementing the public API for our dictionary type, okay? So again, you're gonna be implementing the same ones that we did for the binary tree. So um, the, the, the main things you wanna do with a dictionary is insert new items, uh, find an item by key. So insert a key value pair, uh, uh, look up an item. So look up for a key and return its value if you find it. Um, and then remove an item, right? Um, um, well, and again, kind of like we did for our last one, remove re returns the value of the of if it finds it successfully, it returns the value of the key it just removed. Okay. So again, this is mostly I'm not certain if that's kind of common, but that was the API that our textbook. Um, readings we're basically using for, for, for this, for our dictionary and for our binary tree uh, key value pairs. Um, um, all right, so to insert, um, oh um, yeah, so I did add in a wrinkle here. So we're not allowing duplicate keys this time like we did for, the previous binary tree here. So we're, um, you know, so this is an example, this is a more common example. So it's often that the keys need to be unique. They're unique identifiers for records um, in our collections here. So, um, so the first thing you ought to do is uh, see if an attempt is being made to insert a duplicate key, right? So how do you do that? So, so all these three functions are basically gonna be reusing probe for key slot, um, or, or probe for empty slot, or both, right? Uh, and, and both then the probe for key slot and the probe for empty slot, um, if I didn't emphasize it enough, they are the ones that reuse the hash and the probe function, okay? So you're not gonna be directly using hash and probe um, in your find, uh, insert, and remove. Uh, you're gonna be indirectly using them by calling the, the probe methods. Um, so yeah, if you probe for the key slot um, and if it returns the key that you were asked to insert, um, you should throw the dictionary duplicate insertion exception. But if it returns an empty slot, um, um, if it returns an empty slot, that means that we, it's safe to go ahead and insert the value because that, that key, uh, that, the key value pair, because that key doesn't exist. So at that point, you should call the grow dictionary if needed, which will check if the hash table is 50% full. Um, I didn't show that. I talked about that. But um, um, if you look at the, um, the, the grow hash dictionary if needed, 
Um, it's slightly different from before uh, how we've normally done this. So if its size um, is greater than the allocation size divided by two, right? So it checks if it's 50% full, basically. So if it's less than 50% full, it just returns, right? As soon as it gets to 50% or bigger, um, it will double the size of the um, hash table, right? Um, so we grow it if needed, um, or you just need to call that to get it to be grown if needed. Um, So, so in this one, you're using both the um, uh, probe for key slot, but you need to call probe for available slot because the empty one that you reached might not be the actual slot where you want to insert it. Because remember that the probe for available slot will return either the first empty or the first missing slot that it finds, right? Um, so whichever slot um, it returns, that's where you want to insert the, the, new, the, the key value pair in the table. Um, so to do that, uh, what you want to do is you want to create a new key value pair uh, and then just assign this into the hash table of that slot. Okay, so you're going to, and so, so in this, at this part, you're going to be calling a constructor for the key value pair. Um, so, so again, if you look at the value pair, um, you, you have the key and the value pair for the insert. Um, so you want to be calling this constructor, which will create a new key value pair. And then the result that's returned from creating this new key value pair should be assigned into the hash table um, at the index that was indicated from, from calling the um, probe for available slot, right? And then finally, don't, don't, don't forget to increase the, the, uh, the size of our dictionary by one now, so, right? Um, oh yeah, so um, um, the grow hash dictionary does call the insert method. So if it does have to grow, um, um, it will call insert to reinsert the keys from the old hash table to the new hash table. Um, So, but, but basically, as soon as you get uh, insert compiling, so as soon as you have a stub function, you should also go ahead and, and uncomment the call to insert uh, in the grow hash dictionary if needed. Um, and also in the constructor. Um, so there, there's a call to insert in, in the, the constructor as well, right? Um, so these, uh, these will be being tested um, in these unit tests, uh, probably in the second unit test here of insert. So. All right. Um, all right, and then kind of real quickly to wrap up, um, you know, if we get that far, you know, uh, we're pretty similar for find and remove here. Um, so for find, um, I think that you're only, you only need to use probe for key slot, right? So again, I mean, probe for key slot basically implements find for you, right? So uh, you, you'll call probe for key slot um, and it will return either, it will return a slot that either has the key if it found it or the slot will be empty, right? So if, if the return hash slot is empty, um, you should throw a dictionary key not found because somebody was trying to do a find on a key that hasn't been inserted into our dictionary collection. Otherwise you found it. So you can simply retrieve the value from the hash table slot um, and return that, right? So this one should be pretty quick if you're um, if your probe for key slot is working, uh, and then for remove, um, um, this is pretty similar to find. Um, um, you know, again, you are we are going to be returning the value of, of the key that we're removing. Um, so, so yeah, the algorithm is, 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 is pretty much identical. The only difference is that in step three, um, you need to set the slot where you find the value to be missing, okay? 
before you return the value. Okay? So, so like find, um, um, we're first going to be using the um, um, the uh, probe for key slot to find the thing. And, and you know, if we don't find the value we're asked to remove, we're going to be throwing the same kind of exception, right? If we find that, I mean, that tells you the value that you need to return. Um, so, so the only difference then is that um, Um, maybe I said it a little bit wrong down there, but, but um, instead of inserting the value, you know, the, the, the one that you find, um, oh, it, yeah, so, so there's a slight difference. So um, you don't need to call the grow function. So, 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 so you need, because, because you're removing, not inserting. Right, uh, but but yeah, and, and you've got all the so you won't have to call uh, so you won't have to call the, the probe for available slot either. So so you have all the information. So instead of uh, inserting the, the value, you want to remove that value that, that you found if you successfully found it with the probe for key slot. But you know you're not going to be sending it to empty. Uh, you need to be uh, for step three and four. Um, um, you don't want to set it to empty, you want to set it to missing, okay? So again, if I have, if, if you haven't understood why this is here, a, a little more explanation for that. So when you have a open hash table like this, there, there's this fundamental problem that, okay, what happens when I remove values? Because if I remove value, that could have been in the probe sequence of a value that's still in the table. And if I just represent removing a value as being empty now, it's possible that, that my find will no longer work because I might hit that empty um, and that would indicate like a failed search, but it might be that the value is actually further on in the probe sequence, okay? So we have to have two separate things to represent um, um, slots that don't have a value in it. So things that are completely empty um, or things that aren't really, that, that, that are empty now, so we can put a new value into it if we need to, but they shouldn't be stopped at when we're doing a find um, on our probe sequence, right? So the missing ones need to be still, you know, uh, not stopped at whenever we're, whenever we're conducting a probe sequence um, to look for a particular key. Right? So that, that's the purpose of the missing here. Um, Okay, so I think that's it. I'm going to wrap up this uh, video here and post it as usual. So I didn't have anybody come ask questions. Hopefully, I had everything set up here. I didn't wasn't able to get a confirmation from anybody whether um, audio was good and stuff here. So um, okay, so yeah, good luck on the final assignment and on the final test. Um, and uh, yeah, no, I'll see you guys later then.